My oldest memory is of my younger brother, R.C., eating a smashed, overripe tomato. I remember the way he grabbed at the pulpy red flesh and the way he could only hold it one way, as tightly as he possibly could. This is normal for small children who have not yet mastered their motor skills. There is no difference between holding and squeezing. They don't know any better. He didn't know any better and neither did I. Of course, the guts of the fruit broke free into the spaces between his small fingers and made a mess on the white tray top surrounding him. By the time he opened his hand to take a bite, there were only cold strings of bright skin and small white seeds. My brother was too young to walk, but I wasn't. It was I who rooted around in the bottom of the refrigerator, found the food, and attempted to slice it for him with a butter knife. He'd been crying in his walker, the little wheels scooting back and forth across the floor as he flung himself from side to side. My mother slept so hard his wails didn't stir her. I didn't want to wake her up. I wanted her to sleep, and I wanted to help. My brother and I were 14 months apart in age, so I must have been around three years old. I don't remember a time before him. I was supposed to have been a miracle baby for my mother. She'd had an ovary removed as a teenager, and her doctor told her the other one didn't work. It worked enough for me, apparently. Then R.C. came along, and I was not a miracle anymore. I was a big sister, and to me, that was better. I loved him too much right from the beginning. I saw my mother go to feed him each time he cried, so I thought food would make him happy. He was my best friend. I would take care of him. I rubbed his head and whispered, don't cry, baby, don't cry. When I was in college, one of my therapists at the on-campus counseling center told me I shouldn't remember any of this because I was too young. He told me most people don't have memories of themselves or their experiences at two and three years old. He asked me when I started speaking. I told him that I could speak in sentences before I could walk, a fact I'd been reminded of by my grandmother every chance she got. You couldn't walk straight for nothing. We called you Stagger Lee. She'd say, laughter ripping through her entire body, infecting anyone else in the room, even me, often at my own expense. But you point at something you wanted and say, I want that. I thought, what kind of child is this? She'd shake her head, recreating the same confused look she'd apparently worn all those years ago. I told him my grandmother had a tendency to oversell my childhood intellect so I couldn't be sure if it was accurate information. He wrote it down on his notepad and I continued to tell him my stories or what I remembered of them. My earliest memories are sunburnt Polaroids, frozen moments gone blurry at the edges and spotted all down the middle. Then at four, the pictures become clearer and clearer as do the voices within them. The loudest voice belongs to my brother, before he could properly pronounce my name, calling for me. Hashi, where are you? Where is my Hashi? My brother loved me and made it so easy to believe I was good. I was a child, unspoiled in a certain way. I didn't doubt myself. I decided and I tried. Then I'd fail and try again or I would succeed and go on to try something new. I was not always as afraid of the world or as nervous about the other people living in it alongside me or what they might do to me. When my life was new, I understood in my bones how little it mattered what anybody else was doing or what they thought about what I was doing. I believed my bones then.